Rocket artillery has undoubtedly become one of the most in-demand capabilities in NATO, and armies want more range, more ready rounds, and platforms they can field quickly. GMARS, short for Global Mobile Artillery Rocket System, is a new wheeled launcher from Rheinmetall and Lockheed Martin that carries two standard MLRS pods on a heavy 8x8 truck. It aims to give European users the pod capacity of the tracked M270 with the road mobility and logistics of a truck system, while staying compatible with the existing MLRS and HIMARS munitions family. So, in today's video, we're taking a closer look at GMARS, its development, the rockets and missiles it can launch, and the role it could play across future NATO operations. Let's dive in. Rheinmetall and Lockheed Martin began publicly positioning GMARS as a European launcher solution in 2024 and expanded their cooperation earlier this year, including a plan to grow European missile and rocket production capacity to support long-range fires. They then hosted an international long-range fire summit in Germany on March 31, 2025, where the GMARS was featured as part of a broader ecosystem of rockets and missiles. The first live firing followed in late July and was announced on August 4, 2025. Two GMLRS rockets were launched in the U.S. Army's White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico, the Army's primary missile test range. The event demonstrated safe, accurate firing of standard MLRS rockets from the new launcher and confirmed the integration path the partners had outlined earlier in the year. GMARS mounts a dual-pod MLRS launcher on a Rheinmetall HX Series 8x8 tactical truck. The launcher architecture mirrors the established MLRS family, so the vehicle carries two standard pods. By comparison, the M142 HIMARS carries one pod, while the tracked M270 carries two. GMARS therefore provides twice the ready-to-fire load of HIMARS on a road mobile platform that is logistically simpler than a tracked chassis for many European armies already operating HX fleets. Rheinmetall and Lockheed emphasize commonality to reduce training time and simplify spares and software baselines across mixed fleets. The launcher is intended to drop into existing MLRS fire direction and digital procedures, which lowers integration risk for users that already field HIMARS or M270. The point of GMARS is volume and flexibility without inventing a new rocket family. It is designed to fire current and future MLRS family rounds using standard pods. That includes GMLRS and extended range GMLRS for area effects, attackums for theater range strikes, and the new precision strike missile as it proliferates. In pod terms, the vehicle can carry 12 GMLRS or ER GMLRS rockets, two attackums missiles, or two pods of PRSM, with two missiles per pod, depending on mission and availability. For context, current GMLRS variants are typically described in the 70 to 84 kilometer class. ERGMLRS reaches about 150 kilometers in production form. Attackums is up to about 300 kilometers. And the first PRSM increment exceeds 400 kilometers, with growth planned in later blocks. A wheeled 8x8 does not match a tracked M270 in the worst ground conditions, but it has advantages many European forces value. Higher road speeds, simpler maintenance, easier strategic moves, and fewer heavy transport requirements between firing sites. For shoot-and-scoot tactics, a double-pod load allows a battery to deliver a larger opening salvo, displace quickly, and reload from standard MLRS resupply vehicles using familiar procedures. The HX truck family is already in service across Europe, which should help with driver familiarity and depot support. Interchangeability with M270A2 and HIMARS is the selling point. 
Common pods and software baselines allow mixed batteries and combined exercises to share ammunition, training, and maintenance. Production on European soil is also central to the pitch. Rheinmetall and Lockheed have signaled expanded cooperation on missile and rocket manufacturing in Germany and elsewhere in Europe, a move aimed at shortening delivery timelines and distributing industrial risk as demand for long-range fires increases. In Germany specifically, Parliament approved an initial purchase of Elbit's Euro pools to replace the five Mars II launchers transferred to Ukraine. But at the same time, German media and trade outlets note a larger Bundeswehr effort to select a long-term successor for the broader Mars II fleet, where Europoles and G-Mars are positioned as competing solutions within the future long-range indirect fire system framework. What happens next will depend on trials, budgets, and delivery timelines. For now, both options remain in play. G-Mars sits between heavy tracked launchers and lighter single pod trucks. In practice, a commander can load one vehicle with rockets for counter-battery or area suppression and another with longer-range missiles for high-value targets like air defense nodes, command centers, or logistics hubs, all within the same training and resupply ecosystem. The initial live fire did not disclose engagement ranges or timing metrics, but it validated the core function of launching GMLRS from the HX-based platform. Follow-on trials can confirm time-to-fire, reload drills, and missile firings beyond GMLRS. There are trade-offs and unknowns. Tracked launchers will still be superior in soft or broken terrain. Survivability under drone observation and counter-battery fire will depend on tactics such as dispersion, rapid displacement, and emission control. Public material has not detailed crew size, cab armor packages, or any optional electronic protection kits. Another open issue is delivery pace and ammunition flow. Demand for GMLRS, ERGMLRS, ATACMS, and PRSM is already high across NATO, and fielding speed will depend on national orders, launcher build capacity, and munitions production rates. GMARS benefits from using standard pods, but scale will still be constrained by the broader industrial base. GMARS is a new launcher, not a new rocket family. It doubles pod capacity on a wheeled platform, keeps users inside the MLRS ecosystem, and offers a European production path. The first firing showed the basics work. What matters next is straightforward. Orders, schedules, integration with national fire control networks, and sustained ammunition supply. Those factors will determine how quickly this launcher appears in NATO batteries and how much it changes the volume of fires available in a crisis. What do you think? Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.